Hello and welcome one and all. Welcome back to yet another look at Kamen Rider Revice. Uh, got another double feature this time, man, because I... Spring is basically murdering me, so my sciences were kind of nuts last week. They're a bit better now, but still a little kind of crazy. So forgive me if I sound a little too nasally in this video if anyone actually watches it. <clears throat> but... Yeah, so let's dig into these two episodes of Revice that we have as we are close to the end game of the series and final form debut, which is actually next week. So let's dig into Revice, shall we? So we have episode 36, Humanity at the Crossroads, Their Determination. So the episode actually starts off with uh, a kind of... Weirdly, uh, topical scene of the government basically telling everybody to go buy these Phoenix Sinners and to get buy stamps so that they can have their demons removed and then being put in these housing condominiums or something like that. They're, they're not properly explained or shown. They're just like little developments that are popped up for people who have, uh, you know, had their demons removed to stay in. As this is now the new government plan to deal with the gift situation after the, well, other devastation gift caused last time. <clears throat> Obviously, Daiji's a bit, you know, apprehensive with it. He wants to try his best to protect people, but he's still going along with his orders because he has gone full Suzaku. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a Lelouch to pull him out of the dumbassery that he's going under. I mean, he has Icky, but Icky's doing his own crap. As we get everyone else prepared to move out uh, to deal with the threat. At the same time, uh, Vale is making his own move because Vale decides that he wants to finally end things with the Igarashi family. But he's also told that he cannot kill the Igarashi siblings. But he decides, I can't kill them, but I can hurt them very badly. So that is ultimately his plan to hurt the siblings very badly in order to draw out their father. Now, at the same time, uh, we have uh, Tamaki, or formerly known as Julio, uh, basically trying to join Weekend because he wants to uh, fight alongside Aguilera and or Hana and fight to protect her. Uh, so, <clears throat> so he wants to do that, but the plan does not work as Sakura and Hana go out to deal with some GIF or some demons, some GIF juniors that have popped up, and then Vail decides to take the opportunity to attack them and almost kidnaps Hana, who pulls out the most realistic gun I've seen on this entire show so far, only for Takumi to take the bullet and, so to speak, will not get shot. But he gets kidnapped by Vale. It turns out this was actually part of Weekend's scheme, as they were hoping to basically deal with the Vale threat as well as get the location of the director to deal with him as well. And before they send in, <clears throat> before they send in everybody to you know deal with Vale, unfortunately Vale is hella tough. Remember, he has all the vice stamp power, so he can basically mimic and copy everyone else's abilities. Because he's fucking Veil. <laughs> uh, so, you know, he fights them. At the same time, Daiji's dealing with an outbreak of Gift Juniors. And it's just fighting Gift Juniors. Just fighting a whole bunch of Gift Juniors. Uh, so we'll go back to Taki. If we'll go back to Daiji at the end of the episode. <coughs> Meanwhile, Iki and Sakura are dealing with Va are dealing with Veil. And Veil basically beats the piss out of them, kicking them out of the building. <laughs> and then Tamaki comes up wearing a driver. This is the weekend driver, the most unknown name in this entire series. That was developed to be basically a repaint of the of Sakura's liberal driver. Anyway, he attempts to transform using a I guess a bull vice stamp, kinda of sad he throw away wolves. Only for Vale to steal that shit mid-transformation before he even has a chance to stamp it down. <laughs> <laughs> Bale just pulled the most illegal last move of Kamen Rider right there. It is absolutely hilarious. Also, this was the this was what they're using the promo images. 
in the previews, and it makes it look he's gonna transform because he has a moment where he just thinks back to you no know, his time in the Dead Man's, his best friend who was basically murdered by Osaleta and all that stuff. In a big triumphant moment to lead up to a, a long way transformation, only to have Vale steal his vice to admit transformation. <laughs> it's hilarious. Anyway, Vale beats the vi beats the driver out of him or off of him, and then Honda picks it up. And uses the Queen B vice stamp yet again, this time with the with the driver to transform into a new common rider. Or let me do the count. <clears throat> so this is again if you count Vice and Revy as two separate riders, as well as demons, as well as, you know, counting live and evil as two separate riders, and obviously demons and over demons as two separate riders. So we would be at count. We'd be at nine writers. Now, if we weren't counting all the technicalities of separations, we would be at about six writers. Uh, you know, if we count, you no know, vice, evil, and over demons as part of another writer. Uh, but you know, they're kind of separate writers for for over demons. That makes no sense. Anyway, <laughs> we are at nine common writers for this series. Which, after the last season, feels still not a lot. Especially considering the fact that one's more of a event movie writer. Even if he did premiere in the actual show. If he just hasn't shown up again. And I'm referring to Vale. Uh, Comrider Vale. But anyway, uh, Comrider Aguilera decided to take the name back. In order to make amends for her past actions. Hana beats the piss out of Vale. <laughs> who just gets bodied because he doesn't have the Queen B Vi stamp power to mimic and counter, and so he just leaves because he got beat. And at this point, Honda finishes her final test for Weekend and now is a common writer. And Takumi also joins Weekend. And the episode ends with George running into the Igarashi family home because he has nowhere else to stay. <clears throat> and thus ends the episode. Honestly, I like this one, but I'll save final thoughts for when we do that part. Anyway, on to the next episode. Alright, so now we are on episode 37. Inevitable Fierce Battle. The Decisive Demon Recapturing Mission. So, uh, two things I didn't mention in the last week's epi in the episode uh, dropout for episode 36 was that uh, Iki fought Akemi, uh, who's been transformed into a devil, if you remember. Uh, I forgot what her devil form was called. Uh, Hell Giftarian or Gift Demos. I forget which one. Uh, but also, uh, during this moment, she were told Icky to use Gift's power or to make Gift's power his own so that you know he could defeat Gift. At the same time, uh, we also saw a new Gift demon pop out of the Hell Portal and, well, the form of Hell Giftarian. <laughs> who is <coughs> basically an amalgamation of different Giftarians. Uh, he ended up bodying Daiji at the end of the episode in order to continue Daiji's character arc for these stretch of episodes, quote-unquote character arc, more like character regression concerning the fact that we've done this three different times with this character already. But anyway, leaving that aside... <clears throat> We start the episode with Icky basically recounting what he knows, and well, a lot of lot of emotions all over the place. Basically, to sum up a long story, the group needs to get a hold of some GIF cells in order to make a power up so that Icky can fight GIF. The only way to do this is to capture Akemi, who is now the GIF Demos, and basically remove the GIF cells from her body. In order to transfer it into a new vice stamp to power up the new form. At the same time, the director has revealed himself to the public, saying that Gift brought him back to life in order to help convince people to move things along, as he's also been steadily uh, unleashing the Gift Juniors that they've captured from people in order to drive up, well, <coughs> in order to drive up public panic. At the same time, Daiji's well aware of what's going on and begging the director to not to stop releasing the Gift Juniors, so that you know people won't get won't get hurt. 
Daiji has gone full on board with the let's just bow down the gift plan because, you know, his own plan to stop gift didn't work. And he can't think of another plan to stop the director or gift. And it's just trying to protect as many people as he can. Which in and of itself is admirable. But it is driving a giant wedge between him and his family. Who believe that they have the power to stop GIF. Especially thanks to Akemi's hinting about using her to stop GIF. Uh, Daiji is kind of... We'll talk about Daiji at the end of this part, I promise. Anyway, the George returns to the base. Or the weekend base. Uh, with his plans for the new Vice Stamp, as well as a upgrade to Braid Rex to allow both Icky and Vice to use Braid Rex at the same time, so that they can use it to freeze and capture Akimi, so that you know their plan can go off that hitch after they ambush the director. So again, they ambush the director, and he summons well Gif to summon the Hell Giftarian, as well as Gif Demos, aka Akimi. So, the, so that their plan can be unleashed. At the same time, Daiji is in some basement somewhere fighting a shit ton of Gift Juniors that I guess have just been unleashed there for Daiji to take care of. <coughs> okay, so Daiji does the fighting there, and everyone fighting, and Iki and Vice are trying to freeze Akemi so that they can take her away. At the same time, Sakura's trying to help Gift Darian, who. <coughs> He basically is hot, has Gift's hyper regeneration as his main ability, so her so her attacks just immediately heal. She throws finishes at the thing, but just heals back from them because it has hyper regeneration. So this reminds me a lot of Kamen Rider Eden and how his main thing was I heal I heal back real fast as my body's made out of nano machines. Albeit in this case, it's my body is just really fucking gift out or I guess something like that <coughs> so they fight they fight and then uh, everyone's out of the building and Ikki manages to finally capture Akemi but unfortunately Sakura is put in a tight spot so before she is well beaten uh, before she's beaten badly Icky and Vice step in, but the director and Gif use this moment to kill Akemi because she's served her purpose. At the same time, he also sent for Daiji to come just in time for him to watch Akemi die as the Helgifterian also leaves. So, Akemi dies, basically telling Daiji to believe in his family, but Daiji, of course, does not, you know, do the thing that the person who just died told him to do and decides to beat up on Icky. Telling Icky that he can't save the world the way he is. And he can't defeat Gif. As he's punching Icky in the face, suddenly a hand reaches out and stops him. In which case, it's revealed to be Hiromi. Or Hiromu. As Hiromu has his memories back and has finally made his return. Oh boy, it's been quite a while. <laughs> And that ends the episode. So, yeah, this was a pretty quick one despite all the major stuff that happened. But we'll talk about everything, well, now. Okay, so overall, I do like these set of episodes, or these pair of episodes. I honestly like Hana's character arc coming a bit full circle and her basically reclaiming the name Aguilera for herself as a new common writer instead of completely abandoning it out of the shame of what she used to do back when she was the leader or figurehead of the Dead Man's Cult. I kind of wish we had a few episodes to kind of linger on her, uh, basically throwing away her past as Aguilera before deciding to reclaim it to make amends. But hey, limited episode count, we have other character arcs to go through. So hers being mostly implied is fine. Uh, we do have moments where she does do that, but again, leaving hers is mostly implied, as well as her having the frustration that she can't fight alongside Sakura for a few for at least two episodes. Again, that's fine. We have to rush to the end game. Uh, in terms of other character arcs, I do like Takumi's character arc continuing. Him and I keep forgetting the character who's playing, uh, who's also over demons. I think is Hikaru. 
I keep forgetting his name because he's been such a non-character so far. Uh, but, you know, he's slowly trying to be a bit more character. Uh, anyway, him and Hikaru both had that bit where they were you know, wanting to fight alongside Sakura and Hana instead of just being protected by them or just watching them fight on their own. So it's good to see at least some progress on Takumi's part, even if it is only minor, and basically him making himself uh, a target so that he can be of use to the weekend as a figure, or at least a kidnapping victim. Again, it was smart. I do feel that it was a dumb moment where he left the bag alone with the driver in it, you know, despite the fact there's a driver in it, and he didn't join the fight sooner. Also, Vale pulling that illegal ass move of just stealing the vice stamp when he's right about to use it. Again, probably one of the funniest moments in all of Comrider for me. Like, anytime you get interrupted transformation sequence, it's kind of hilarious because that's just one of the unwritten rules of Tokusatsu. You don't interrupt the transformation sequence. It's like, you know, all those jokes about the villains on the sideline wait for the Sailor Scouts to finish transforming. <laughs> it's just, it's that kind of thing. Uh, anyway, it, it, that was cool. Uh, also, Comrade Aguilera. I have mixed things about the suit. So when I originally saw the suit, my I thought it was like going to be like one big, like you know, you know, eye thing. But no, the eyes are underneath the kind of horn that's a stinger thing. But they also circle up to form a well, I guess a stinger. I get what they're going for, but. I like the body, but the helmet itself is throwing me off, and that's just kind of weird. Again, I like the body of the suit. You know, it fits the theme, her having the little daggers, and it being, like, a very agile form. Again, I like that. I just don't like the helmet too much because it's throwing me off with what's supposed to be a stinger, but when you look at it straight on, as you would from a scan... It looks like it's a mono eye. You don't notice the eye holes that are at the bottom of the stinger part. Again, it's weird, and I don't like it. Uh, anyway, next we have the next episode of the next character, Daiji. So Daiji has basically uh, gone through a lot after Phoenix was basically busted up by GIF. I mean, Phoenix is still around, obviously, or else we'll be administering the, you know, uh, the demon removal, but the thing about Daiji is the fact that he's basically gone backwards in his character to being how he was in the early series where he had a resentment against Icky, only now it's a lot worse now because of the dire situation. Now, I have seen some fans commenting that because he doesn't like it, he likes his inner darkness now. In Keguro, uh, he is essentially unbalanced in a way. And that would be cool if they do mention it or if they follow up on it in some way in the show. But I don't think they would have the time to follow up on this plot point of Daiji potentially being unbalanced because of he because he had his demon removed or at least sacrificed. <clears throat> also, again, we have the people who have had their demons removed being sent to these... Uh, housing community things, and we really don't go much into that outside of Icky, uh, reminiscing to the early part of the series, where some real estate developers are trying to buy the land for the hot spring, and this kind of ties way back into that plot point about the urban development. I mean, it's, it's a callback, so it's not bad, but still is pretty... Pretty random for Icky to think back about, oh, those two assholes tried to buy the hot spring when my and I, when I was first being a common writer. And mom was in the hospital. Uh, so, yeah. I also do like Akemi's last moments and a bit of the fallout after she dies with Daiji. Basically blaming Icky for it because, you know, he only saw Icky fighting her. And saw her die. He, didn't, he doesn't know the plan. And didn't know anything about any of that. So. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> her, him watching her die. Was a pretty epic. A pretty tragic moment. But also pretty cool. And then eventually just leads to Daiji public a key in the face. I feel like we've done this before in this series. Daiji on top of Vicky punching him in the face for some reason. 
uh, although in this case it's all the way Daiji and not Kagero. And then before Daiji can deliver another punch, Hiromi's back, or Hiromu's back, with his memory back, and I'm just like, I'm going to have to watch your spinoff series, aren't I? Yeah, maybe I'll do an episode about that. But, yeah, overall the episodes are fine. I do like the build-up to the final form that we're getting. I just have mixed feelings about Daiji's, like, character arc at this point. Considering the fact that we're going backwards from him, basically being fully trusting of his brother to uh, not believing his brother can do everything and fighting against him in a way, to, you know, repeat the cycle all over again. Because we know he's going to be there in the final battle against Gif one way or another. Uh, although a part of me does hope that this does lead to uh, a return of Kegaro in a way. Although we probably are getting the last two Vice Amps for the scorecard for the, se- for the season. <clears throat> so, yeah. Again, overall, fun, fine episodes. Just some issues with, with Daiji's character arc. Fail continues to be probably the funniest villain, or at least the most serious in the director. He's just hamming it up, and I honestly just love that about him. Like, he's a greasy cheese ball, and he knows it. And I'm just kind of here for that level of energy. <sighs> but, yeah. I'll see you all next week as we finally get our final forms for a revise. Until then, everybody.